In the search for the uh, new technologies, we're always driven by the needs of the warfighter. And one of the things that's really clear is that power and batteries is something that's a big need in defence, to have alternatives. The fundamental premise is that you can take naturally occurring products, such as lactate, and you can degrade them using enzymes. As you degrade them, you release electrons, and these electrons are then available to be captured and used as power. We're using DNA as a sort of functional platform, as a structural scaffold. We're functionalizing our DNA with sequences that allow us to bind an enzyme cascade, and that cascade generates energy. For defense, our warfighters continue to carry more and more electronics that require power, and that means carrying batteries with them. The current battery technology that our soldiers are using is containing a lot of energy in chemical format. And if that battery gets shot, for example, it can explode and burst into flames. Our bio battery is made out of DNA, enzymes, lactate and water. If you shot it, it would just go splat. So there's a significant safety benefit. This is a unique capability. It means we're going to be able to do things that we haven't been able to do before when it comes to powering. With this hydrogel that we're forming, you can dry that down and you can reconstitute that with seawater. So you have an incredibly sort of energy dense battery that can be carried very portably. It's very light. And you can reconstitute it anywhere. Seawater, fresh water. So you can carry it on ships, you can carry it in disaster areas. One of the potential applications of the biobattery is to produce power in austere environments, so where you can't hook up to the national grid, for example. So people have often said to me, well, why would I need your biobattery when I could use a solar panel? But if you think about it, a solar panel is very exposed. It has to be able to see the sun. It also decreases in efficiency rapidly if it gets dusty. The biobattery format can be put in a tent. It can be put somewhere out of sight. It doesn't need the same level of maintenance um, and exposure of personnel. It's vital um, in this day and age that the armed forces consider sustainability um, and the, the impact that it has on the environment. These batteries might provide an alternative solution, a greener solution to generating power. Some of the compounds that go into regular batteries are quite nasty, you know, for the environment. All the things that are going into our battery are natural and will degrade over time. So there's lots of different ways that we are addressing some of the problems associated with existing battery technology. So the project started in 2017 and it's a, a real cross-functional sort of collaboration. Funding, first of all, there's ourselves from MOD, DSTL, and we are partnering with ONRG from the US Department of Defense. The project is actually being undertaken by two organizations. In the UK, we are working with Touchlight Genetics, and in the US, we have the University of Utah, who are doing the enzyme optimization and cascade evolution, the biology part of the project. And bringing those two different parts together is really strong. What was really interesting about this project is the capabilities that Touchlight Genetics has. Touchlight is uh, unique, um, because not only the scale that we can produce DNA at and the speed, um, but also we're incredibly focused on the, the quality of the DNA we produce. We're interested in using DNA as an actual material, so we need to be able to produce ultimately kilogram amounts. I mean, we can generate a lot of DNA here at Touchlight, but for this project we're going to need a lot of DNA. So the first part of proving it would work was making the enzymes work together and make them work really efficiently. And we achieved that. That was a great day when our performers came to us and said, we are producing 40 milliamps per centimeter square power. We were very excited. The next challenge is going to be to do a technology demonstrator to show that we can actually do something useful with that power production system. The problem is going to be, can they generate enough power? And that is really what the challenge is that we put the team up to, is to be able to engineer biology to create a battery system that will be competitive. It's high risk. It's a first time for everything. Because we are at the leading edge of technology, the risk for failure is high. And yet it's going amazingly well. It's really paying off taking that risk. It feels absolutely fantastic to be involved in these types of projects. It's really interesting to sort of occasionally step back and see where it's going to go. It's an example of where defense-funded research 
will have benefit for the civilian arena. The impact for defence as well as for society at large will be multifold. This is a type of project um, that, that offers the military amazing benefits. Uh, it, it will save lives. It's the sort of technology that uh, defence needs. The number of applications there are massive. I believe it's going to change the world. It has applications in so many areas potentially that yeah, it's, it's sort of exciting to think about.